Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and it is such a delight to be back with you for our third installment entailing this gentleman to my right, Mr. Craig Mills, and problems within the adoption industry within Louisiana. Uh, now Mr. Mills, at the conclusion of section two, or session two rather, uh, we ask you about your end game and basically your end game is to keep this from happening to right. future adoptive parents. In other words, to, to stop the next uh, Craig Mills family from having to go through what you went through uh, and it appears that <clears throat> excuse me it appears that a good bit of the blame for what you have been through can literally be laid at the doorstep of the Department of Children and Family Services or DCFS would that be correct yeah I think so uh, in addition to some uh, the the lack of interest in law enforcement from keeping this from happening um, the state is um, obligated obligated by laws across the state different sheriff's offices uh, interpret the laws differently um, so yeah but I think I think DCFS does have a, 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 a larger role to play in this particularly when you uh, you have policies in place that that prevent placement agencies from incentivizing birth mothers with financial guarantees mm -hmm. that's in their policies and you have um, licensed agencies in Louisiana um, much like the one I mentioned in the last segment that has an income of over $2 million, placing ads soliciting mothers because they're, they're no longer birth mothers once you surrender the child. You're actually dealing with a live human being child and surrendering that with guarantees of free phones, like I mentioned last time, free lo relocation, um, free medical expenses, free housing, those types of things that, you know, who pays for them if the mother's not pregnant? Why, you know, why, why, why are we incentivizing birth mothers just because they got pregnant? Mm -hmm. And according to the policies that I've read, you're not supposed to be able to do that. DCFS is not, is not monitoring, in my opinion, their licensed agencies looking at their website. It's very clear. Website, all of your financial, medical, emotional needs are met. What does that, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, you get back to, um, the, the circumstances that Louisiana has in providing for reasonable expenses, does that mean that it's reasonable to finance a thousand dollar car lease every month for a pregnant mother? I, I don't know. That doesn't seem very reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. When you go back to the question and ask, how did the birth mother accommodate all of those expenses prior to her becoming pregnant? We need to place, we need to place caps on those we'll get that in, we'll get into that in, in another segment but yeah absolutely DCFS I think is complicit okay. in allowing their agencies to, to just pick up I'll pick up the newspaper you know, we were talking about um, birth mothers coming from out of state into Louisiana mm -hmm. pick up the advocate on Sunday and look in the classified section look at the adoptions and look at the area codes of people who are who are advertising in the newspaper soliciting mothers to surrender their children with the promises of financial aid mm -hmm. okay there's actually a statute on the books that makes that illegal okay okay you you can't advertise in print or electronic media unless you are an adoption agency all of these are individuals that are advertising in the advocate ah. so yeah dcfs is not monitoring this at all i don't know what they're doing <laughs> except forcing families like ours, I guess the, the losers in the game that we didn't know we were playing, to do the investigation for them. Going back to the financial woes of this state, why are we continuing to fund the department like that when the victims of alleged crimes are the ones that are forced to do the, their own investigations through a civil lawsuit? We, we, I filed a complaint against the, the, uh, the agency in Lake Charles. Mm -hmm. And they did an investigation but never sought out other witnesses except for the, the owners of the, of the agency. And in this, in this three paragraph investigation in the findings, there were about 19 things that I'd get given back to them that were completely inaccurate. Most of which I had documentation for. Okay. Now, the problem, Robert, as I see, is I don't think DCFS really wants to address this. Oh, really? When I filed the complaint, I heard nothing from them. I actually stumbled upon the fact that they did an investigation, an investigation. 
And I was told by the director of licensing, you have to file a Freedom of Information Act request to get information about my own complaint. <laughs> And they never told me that they did an investigation. There was no communication. You got no feedback? I had, I had zero communication back from DCFS. Wow. Regarding my complaint of an alleged illegal adoption. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. I stumbled upon the fact that they did an investigation. And when I inquired about it, I was told, you have to fill out a Freedom of Information Act request in order to get that information. My own complaint. <laughs> I have to file a Freedom of Information Act to get it, okay? And I got it, and I read it, and I said, this thing is wholly inaccurate. <laughs> and gave them emails and phone calls and other documentation as to the actual facts. Mm -hmm. That was two years ago, Robert. Two years ago. And how many times have I heard back from them regarding that? Zero. Wow. Zero, folks. Zero. I actually asked them questions in this in this response. Mm -hmm. Why are you allowing your state agencies to produce documents like you have on your website? Why are you allowing your state agencies, licensed agencies, to solicit birth mothers with financial guarantees? And what did they say? I've Zero. heard nothing. Nothing. I've heard nothing from them. So you continue to hear stories like this over the past two years talking to a half a dozen, maybe a dozen families, just in this local Baton Rouge area, who've been impacted by an alleged adoption scam. Mm -hmm. And I keep telling DCFS and, 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 and the good folks that, that are watching this, how many more people have to be hurt before you have a state agency stand up and say, you know what, we're gonna finally enforce our policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with children who are being bartered with financial gain. Wow. You know, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a drug deal. Mm -hmm. You have, you have a buyer, mm -hmm. you have a seller, mm -hmm. and you have a mediator. As long as those three don't go to the cops and say anything about it, who's, who's going to find out? Well, that's the situation we're in. Wow. That's... Today you have buyers, you have sellers, and you have mediators. And you have state agencies who are, who are, who are at best turning a blind eye. That's putting it nicely. <laughs> well, they're not keeping the, the, the normal citizenry informed at least of complaints that have very significant factual backgrounds. Exactly. You've got, I want to emphasize again, he said he got zero, zero. response, zero feedback. Zero. From, it's as if he had never even filed it. He had to, he had to end up stumbling upon finding out that that's there right. was an investigation. That's right. Conducted. And once I, once I put all that together, that's, that's how I got into the, the, the testimony with the legislature. Once I found all of this and I found the inaccuracies in the report, mm -hmm. and not just because I say it, it's because I have documentation. I have, I have testimony from the Office of Disciplinary Council. I have testimony from the Louisiana Bar, so, uh, the Louisiana Bar Association, the Louisiana Board of Social Work Examiners. I have testimony in court now. Mm -hmm of inaccuracies in their investigation. People say one thing in one response, DCFS found something totally different. I don't know which is right or wrong, right. but if it's different, shouldn't there be something else done? Exactly. Someone else asked another witness, I've got 12 witnesses to these events. Mm -hmm. And there's only one that's ever been interviewed, if you will. Okay. The other and that's the, that's the that's the social worker in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Okay, DCFS never talked to her. Wow. But I've got conflicting information. Who's responsible for that? Well, and I, and I think uh, perhaps you can correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe one of the reasons this has been uh, able to go on like this for such an extended period, and I think you may have very well brought that out in the very opening words of your testimony. Uh, to the House Committee is that so many times when this happens to people, they just kind of lick their wounds right. and they go on and they say, well, I learned a lesson in life. Right. And so, and that, and I'm certainly not faulting them because one thing I've learned from all of this uh, is the, the high level of emotion uh, that is entailed in the adoption process because you're not just talking about going out and getting a vehicle right. and being skinned. You're talking about literally changing your entire family structure 
uh, and, and, and doing a good thing in providing a very nice home for an adoptive child. Uh, and I think that can be so emotional, correct me if I'm wrong, because I've not been through the process, as I said in the video, but I can easily see where, having looked into what all you've been through, how you would just be emotionally drained. Uh, when you get hit with, yeah. as you said, I didn't realize I was in a competition, uh, and you found out you lost. Right. Uh, and it, perhaps it's just easier to just say, you know what, I got to forget it. And and I think you're doing a great tribute that for others that that well, have had this, and you. you and, made it's, it and, so it's, and it's the it's DCFS's licensed agencies that put people like us in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. In, in my opinion, mm -hmm. you have situations where um, the Prospective adoptive families uh -huh. are chewed away whenever their uh, their outcome isn't what the agency prospects it to be. Mm -hmm. you know, there's also agencies that solicit for families. Mm -hmm. Not only do we have a product that we have to sell, we need families to come and and procure that product. Mm -hmm. So they're soliciting families and they build profiles. And the agencies are building this this expectation through these marketing activities. That's where DCFS needs to come in and say you need to tone it down a little bit. Ah, okay. And they're not doing. They're it. not doing. It. They're not doing it. Like I said in the last segment, there there is a measure of risk when you put yourself out there. You yes. build a profile. There is an expectation of some sort that. The birth mother could possibly want a parent, which is a great option, mm -hmm. and that's something that we all have to live with. Right. But what what we shouldn't have to live with is when agencies are made aware of multiple families being involved with a single birth mother, whether it's being matched, whether it's providing support, duplicate support, or in in our case, um, the allegation of a scam. Mm -hmm. being run yes the agencies are made aware of that and then they default back to well it's it's usually the last it's the it's the last family in that gets the baby like i said before i didn't know i was in a competition but it's it's it, it boils down to dcfs having policies and procedures in place today that is going to continue to allow louisiana to be looked at as ground zero in my opinion for ado uh, unscrupulous adoptions. Well, and, and I think the exposure that you're giving that issue uh, is certainly extremely commendable because I think it probably does take some some uh, courage uh, to step out like you've done. And, and I really appreciate the opportunity to work with you right. on exposing this. We've still got a couple of more segments to go, but I think you would agree uh, that this is becoming a very compelling story, particularly when you talk about an agency such as DCFS that should be charged with the responsibility of when they see this kind of thing going on, and that's why you would presume we have them there, uh, is to step in and say, look, we're not going to have a bidding war, we're not going to have competing families, uh, or, or work within agencies that are facilitating it, and you turn the blind eye, and, and I think the most striking thing of what he has said is when he filed his complaint, he got no feedback. Uh, I think that speaks volumes. And so we've still got more material to cover with you. That's going to wrap it up for segment three. But I think all of our viewers would certainly, uh, I think you have to be uh, pretty impressed with the compelling evidence that this gentleman has about severe problems uh, that we have within the Louisiana adoption industry that cause us to be known as, as he just said, ground zero. Thank you so much. We look forward to bringing you episode four. Once again, this is Robert Burns, and uh, we want to thank you for tuning in for this video. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, you're quite welcome.